Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Outlier YouTube channel and our Get to Know segment. Uh, I'm your host, D.P. Lau, and I'm here with my partner in crime. Definitely in crime. I'm Kathleen Antrim, and we are here with Clay Stafford today. And I have to get my notes out because this man has done so much. I had to write it all down. I mean, there's it's crazy. In fact, Publishers Weekly calls him one of the top 40 most influential people in publishing. Um, he's written oodles of books. He sold over 4 million copies in 16 languages. He's a bestseller. He's award-winning. Um, in his spare time, he's an actor, um, a producer, a uh, reviewer of books, film, etc. He's a playwright, screenwriter. And um, I, I mean, I honestly don't know how you do all this. And on top of that, well, he's been a showrunner, which you'll have to talk to us a little bit about that and, and what that is. I don't know if our viewers know what that is. And he started a conference called Killer Nashville to help writers, aspiring writers and up and coming writers advance themselves in their career. So welcome, Clay Stafford. It's fantastic to have you. Thank you so much for having me. And and uh, both of you are great. I'm glad to be here. <laughs> <laughs> well, this is going to be fun. Well, Clay, let's, let's go back a little bit. Uh, how did you start down this path? What led you down the which path? The, down the creative <laughs> entertainment path, not the path of insanity. We know about that, but the, but, but the path of creativity to get into all these creative, multi multi faceted uh, things that you do is just unbelievable. How did? What was the first step? You know, the first step. I think I was just uh, born with it, and and I'm being serious. I was, um, you know. Uh, it's my son whom you know but you haven't seen in a while he's not a big, in a while big hulking guy now Ooh. uh he's he's in college but uh you know so even people in college don't know what they want to do necessarily mm -hmm. when they're getting their undergraduate degrees it's like i'm i guess i'll major in business i don't know you know and they they kind of pursue that i knew at a very early age what i wanted to do and I think that that, uh, that has helped me tremendously. I think when you know your path, now it wasn't an easy path, that's for sure. But mm -hmm. when you know the path that you want to take, then I think it's a lot easier. So I really think that I was born with that creative thing of, of course, I entertained more practical jobs like uh, uh, um, a major agency uh, tried to get me to be an agent for them. Um, I had an opportunity to be an entertainment attorney um, and took took the law classes, but just never went forward with that because it was, and then <laughs> contracts. <laughs> And then, you know, I, even every child's dream of being a veterinarian, right? I went mm. through that one. And so I went through other practical things, like my parents wanted me to be practical, but I happened to get a job at age 10 as a professional actor. Oh, wow. That ended up changing everything. So I was introduced, I was in New York, I was in Los Angeles, I was in Atlanta. Uh, so as a, as, as a, as a small kid, so I basically grew up on, uh, I grew up on the mash set or you remember mash. Oh, oh yeah. I love mash. Yeah. It's one of my all-time yes. favorites. So I grew up on the mash set, not as an actor or anything, but Al, um, uh, Alan Alda liked me. And so, uh, he let me run around with, uh, on the mash set and, uh, my, I had a relative who was a paralegal for 20th century Fox and that's how I got access, you know, onto the lot. But once I got on the lot, I was everywhere. And then after that, I think it's just um, when I was growing up, I basically had didn't I, I wanted to tell stories, but how I told stories didn't really matter. I wanted to do it through plays, through screenplays, through, uh, you know, actual short stories or long form stories or uh, even music. So growing up, I had um, I had three big idols that I really uh, just wanted to emulate. And one was Stephen King, oh, one sure. was Steven Spielberg, and one was Sir Elton John. And I got to either work with or work for or be associated with all three of those by the time it was over. So um, it was, uh, it's been a wonderful trajectory you know you know my background doug i grew up in oh, appalachia yep and uh i mean serious appalachia like go out 
and get water out of the well, Kathleen. It's Appalachian, <laughs> wow. no running water, uh, relatives with outdoor no plumbing, electricity. So I mean, it was serious Appalachia, you know, yeah. uh, barefoot throughout the warm summer. <laughs> <laughs> months yeah months. try not to get hookworm <laughs> yeah a great way to and, and i think i did have hookworms a few yeah, exactly we all did yes yeah. <laughs> but i think that it was just um i had an interest i had an opportunity um and people for some reason felt inclined to hold out their hand and lift me up to the next level and the next level and the next level until um, I got to a point where I got to do all the things that I really loved. And I didn't have to have my eight millimeter camera and I didn't have to, you know, worry about whether it, it was a spec script or not. I was able to get paid for what I wanted to do and use other people's money. And that was just a, a wonderful thing. Wow. And so um, I hope that answered your question and I didn't yeah. ramp all over the place, but how did I get started? I think I had it in me. How did I continue? Because people were very generous and giving right. to me. So, and, and I, I owe everything on? to them. So do, I'm so, sorry, Kathy, what? So what shows were you on as a child and when you were acting? Uh, I did a lot of off-Broadway type touring things like uh, I was uh, El Gallo in the Fantastics um, wow. and um, I did, uh, you know, you're talking almost another life. I was on the television show Days of Our Lives and if you go mm -hmm. on my website, <laughs> you'll see a picture of me with McDonald Carey and and uh and um i so i i did i did the the gamut of, of mm -hmm, mm -hmm. what uh what people uh what I, I was fortunate i was a working actor so i was working all the time and um that uh that in itself <laughs> was an accomplishment yeah, that exactly. is a huge accomplishment <laughs> i mean that's a tough tough so, tough so anyway business. i got you know i got tired of the insecurity of being an actor so i became a writer so <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's so much better yeah there's so much better yeah but i, I will, I, I will tell you one of one of my and I will, i'll say this to your your, your viewers because i think it's really really really, really important it was life-changing for me uh, I got an opportunity to go work at Universal Studios and I was thinking, and I had been, I had been, I, I, I formed the Clay Stafford Company, which was a, uh, a, a film company in, in, in 1976. And so uh, I was doing bank commercials and all of those kinds of things. So I was doing this for a long time, you know, just as a, a, like a kid. And so finally got to the point where uh, I got a, an offer to go work over at Universal Studios, and I thought, as an actor, this is an ideal place to be. Well, what I did when I went over there was actually get assigned to be a guy named Lou Wasserman's assistant. Do we know who Lou Wasserman mm -hmm. is? Oh, yeah. Yes. Okay. Oh, my gosh. Uh, the yes. last, last of the moguls, right? Yeah. And so he told me that, uh, you know, if you – if you so i went over to the business side you see the business side switch right there because mm -hmm. he told me that the more you know about the business the of course the better you are and so if you are on the side of a producer actor mm -hmm. a producer director you always have the opportunity to hire and fire yourself so if you look at a lot of the credits that i've got you see that i'm like producer and mm -hmm. i have fired myself numerous times i've i've <laughs> tried to no seriously i've tried to write the script i've tried to write the show and I, I'm like, it's not working for me. And I hire somebody else. The same thing with being director or mm -hmm. what, whatever. But I think the more your viewers who are wanting to get into, you know, full-time writing mm -hmm. know about behind the scenes and generating yes. their own creations and their own work, rather than waiting for someone else to give it to them, mm -hmm. uh, put them in a, you, you ask sometimes, you know, they say, you know, you seem like you've done a lot. Well, I put myself in that position where I could hire myself. Mm -hmm. So it makes it easier to, uh, sure. easier to get the job. <laughs> 
Exactly. <laughs> well, also, the interview is very short. <laughs> and, you know, people don't know what a showrunner is. And I think that um, it, there's a misconception about that. They think, you know, you organize the props or something. That is a huge role. So would you talk a little bit about that? I mean, that's, a, yeah, that's it, like I, the role. Yeah, I worked on on numerous shows as a showrunner, especially for PBS productions. And mm -hmm. um, on those, basically, you are the producer in the line of fire. Mm -hmm. And so uh, you make sure that not only uh, not only the things that are in production right now are being taken care of, everything that has been produced prior and in the can and being edited and everything, mm -hmm. you're taking care of that. And then you're looking forward to the next six episodes of what is, is going to take place there. And you're in charge of hiring and firing and making sure everybody's where mm -hmm. they need to be and looking at scheduling and looking at the budget, making sure we come in under budget on time. Uh, it's uh, it, the, no the, pressure weight, at all. the weight falls. Like, you know, you, everybody says like executive producer, that's the big guy, right? Well, no, they're the guy that's growing out the right. cash, right? Yeah, right? But the showrunner, especially, you know, in, 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 and it's only a term that's used in television but in a showrunner uh is actually the one that is making sure all of that gets done from beginning to end for that entire series and uh so it's a wow. it's a it's a pretty it's a pretty huge job but it's also a lot of fun you, you know that's you're down in the trenches you're not uh it's not sitting in an office. You're actually dealing with the creatives all the time. You're dealing mm -hmm. with the tech all the time. And so it's it's a wonderful, wonderful place to be. I love it because I love, I mean, you can tell probably I like being <laughs> active. <laughs> <laughs> But, but you, mean, said you, a, you said you started your Clay Stafford company as a teenager and all that. What, where did American Black Guard come from? Uh, that was or, basically, um, <laughs> you're you're asking you're asking a lot of behind the scenes stuff yeah but, well, but yeah yeah it's it was a basically a financial consideration american blackguard uh uh and and that's an irish term for right. the blackguards uh mm -hmm. they started out as a really good people until they uh they were like the king's guards and then mm -hmm. uh they uh the kings took a turn for the worst and so did their henchmen so they sure. became laggards and so they're a swarthy bunch and uh i had a, a woman from ireland one time go uh american black oh cheeky <laughs> i thought that was the funniest and cutest thing ever yeah yeah <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, American Blaggard became the incorporation of the Clay Stafford Company. Right. Um, and I did that because I am a, it is also a loan out corporation. So uh, do you want me to explain that? Yes. Sure. Okay. okay. So basically um, for, for tax reasons and accounting reasons, it, it I, I work for American Blackguard Inc., no mm -hmm. matter whom I work for. American Blackguard Inc. makes a contract with you, Kathy, to mm -hmm. hire my services as an actor, director, or producer. And you pay American Blackguard Inc., and I never touch any of the money. And it. it's, bas it's basically called a loan out corporation. That's how it began as a loan out corporation. Then it became a producing entity unto itself, but it still is a loan out corporation because I still, I work for American Blackguard Inc. No matter right. what show I'm on, no matter what I'm doing, no matter, no matter what book is released, I'm just, I'm just a poor grunt at American. You're Blackguard. just the talent. I'm, I'm just, yeah. yeah, exactly. And yeah. that depends upon who you're asking. <laughs> Sounds fascinating. So what are because you, I, I do so now? many things too. It funnels everything into sure. one right. unit and m m doesn't make the accountant cross-eyed. Yeah. How, and how a corporation is a living work, entity yeah. of its own. So that's, there's a lot of protection there too. Yeah. Um, so what are you working on now? Are you writing now? Are you, are you producing these days? I, what are you up to? I am, I am, I am writing a screenplay. I'm writing a nonfiction book and I'm writing a, uh, novel. And when is, when is it going to be there? That's what my agent keeps asking me. When is, when am I going <laughs> right. to, when am right. I going to, to have that? And, uh, yeah. I've also got this, uh, crazy thing. I've, I've started, uh, I've started blogging and sending out newsletters, which 
you may have right. got this one, Doug. Yeah. And um, and it's like I've never sent out newsletters before in my life, and I'm doing the same thing. You guys are kind of mm -hmm. like doing in in terms of encouraging writers and people mm -hmm. who are coming up. So I mean, I think this is a great place for you guys to do a plug for what you're doing with a with the outliers, <laughs> yeah. and we bounce off that. <laughs> yeah. You know. Yeah. No, we definitely want to do that, and and yeah. we're trying to do it so that it's affordable. Because, you know, so many people yeah. out there and young people who want to write, um, they need at least, a, I think, a foot in to start to learn how to you know, do some of this, write commercially viable fiction, <clears throat> fiction and, and help them start to get a foot up and start to learn a little bit about the business and, and you know, et cetera. Mm -hmm. so. I think you guys are doing a great work. And, and uh, if uh, I, with Killer Nashville, um, it, we, we haven't talked about that, but it's a conference that I started for writers. That was going to be my next question. So okay, tell us we'll about that. It, but let, yeah. me, let me, let me finish this. Cause I'm, I, I'm, um, I'm bouncing off Kathy for a second that I, we started a scholarship fund there as well. Love that. Because I felt that the very people who need to be at killer Nashville are not always the ones who can afford to right. be at killer. Exactly. Nashville. And, yes. and so we, we've had some wonderful scholarships of, of people um, who have, who have donated, uh, donated funds in scholarships, either in their name or in someone else's name in order mm -hmm. to make it possible for someone to come. And these scholarships range from tuition all the way through transportation, food, everything, the whole works just to wow. get people there. And, 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 and I, and that comes from, again, the very first question you asked me, Doug, um, that trajectory that mm -hmm. I went through those people reaching down and, you know, Killer Nashville has got a, an interesting vibe too. It's a very helpful organization and, and we call it, you know, the Killer Nashville family. Cause I think it, we're small. Yes. We intend to stay small. Uh, we, we've been selling out for the, I don't know if you knew this or not, Doug, for the last yeah. four years, we've sold out, oh. turned people away because I really don't want it to get it big and too big that mm -hmm. it loses that intimate feel that that I think the new writers really need because they're so shy and there's they're so they're true like, they're they're all around really professional writers and that's not me you know that's what they're thinking right right and right. and to be able to we take over a hotel a hotel yeah. but we we basically it's just our people in the hotel and so everybody you meet in the in the you know the 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 the, the bar in the, the cafe and whatever it is are all writers. And, you know, it's that great thing. The uh, thriller fest is done, you know, but you, some, some deals are made in the bar and oh, you know, absolutely all yes. of that. So, so we're, you know, we're real small. We're not, we're not thriller fest. We're, we're a very small little organization, but we, we trying to fill that niche of, of uh, encouraging those people that are coming in. There's so much to be said for that, too, because, you know, many of the new writers who come don't even want to say they're a writer. You know, they it's haven't even come out of the closet yet to be a writer. And so they get there and they're so shy. And it's true to keep it intimate like that and small and inclusive. Um, there's just that's a beautiful thing. And I, I think that that makes a big difference in a comfort level and, you know, letting them feel part of the tribe, part of the family, what have you. And well, Killer Nashville is exactly that. It's a very easy conference it's easy mm -hmm. to navigate it's easy to meet people it's lower key because it, everybody is just having a good time and it is writers mm -hmm. people who want to write and i think that that gives it a different flavor it's not like bowser khan which is a big fan conference which is great right. but killer nashville is more for people who want to who want to walk down this path for some insane reason. You know? yeah. <laughs> but I'll tell you how can't help it. Yeah. <laughs> but I'll, I'll tell you how good, good clay, clay is at managing things. Many years ago, I was coming there to killer Nashville and I get an email like six weeks before it's going to happen say, from the hotel saying your reservation has been canceled. And Oh, by the way, killer Nashville is not oh, going to be here. Remember that fiasco. I oh remember my that gosh. And you oh, went, gosh. you went insane trying to find out what do we get? Six was it like six weeks. Yeah, it was six weeks to Before, find a new, find a new venue to house 350 people. And, yeah. and oh, uh, no. 
and uh we we pulled it off we, yeah and it was perfect we, but that's a showrunner for you right exactly yes. Yes. that's exactly what a showrunner does mm -hmm. okay <laughs> we we no longer have that location we switch to another location find the location okay it can happen so, show me like, pressure and i'm running towards it <laughs> <laughs> exactly <laughs> exactly exactly yeah uh that, that was that was an incredible year that and 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 we went to we went to the Omni Hotel, which is a great hotel, oh. but I said it's like it's like the Atlanta airport. Um, it was uh, it was uh, uh, you know it, it was just hallways that went on forever, right. and that was not really. Again, we go for intimacy, right? Sure. So now you've put yeah. us in. You've put us in. You know the Chicago airport. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. But they, were, but they were kind enough to take us in, and uh, because wow. we have we have eleven, we're small, but we have eleven um, up to eleven uh, sessions running concurrently at the same time. So we have to have space for breakouts. all of those to yeah. breakouts to take yeah. place mm -hmm. uh, to run concurrently. And you'd be surprised. There's not, not that many hotels, even the big hotels that have the breakout space. They've got great ballroom, right. got, exactly. you know, all kinds of things. So finding <laughs> what we need. And you, the last thing I would ever want to do, Doug, is to, is to send out an email saying, um, Hey, we've canceled your session that you're supposed to be on the panel on. Mm -hmm. right? Exactly. Yeah, exactly. that does not fly so <laughs> take well. Anything <laughs> over that one. So, so we we had to we had to find a hotel. Yeah. But Almost that was really but really that. interesting year. But yeah, there's a bunch of stuff that always goes on behind the scenes. Um, oh, yeah. And um, you know, you just you just you just you just get it done because it's well, yeah. you you pulled it off well, seamlessly, we're... and the hotel actually was like you said it was huge. But it was fine because it's a very nice place. It was delightful. And I think everybody right had a great time. Yeah, yep. it was it yep. was delightful. Yep. I, I love that hotel. Absolutely. This place has love, a huge bar a and a live that, stage. Do what? <laughs> wow. It has live music that, that opens up on the streets of downtown Nashville. You know, the, the oh, live fun. Yeah. Oh, they have a stage and they have live music down there. You can open up all the doors and hear it two blocks away. I mean, it's it's really wow. a cool hotel. It's a wonderful so, hotel. Clay, you need to tell us, you know, when Killer Nashville is oh my and gosh. where it's taking place and what hotel and how people can sign up. Okay. Uh, the best the best thing for that is to go to uh, www.killernashville.com and to tell you the date. I can't remember the dates on top of my head, but it's at the end of August. I can pull it up on, you know. It's like the 21st, 22nd or something Thank like you, that. Doug. Yeah. <laughs> it's something like that. Yes. But, <laughs> but uh, uh, it, it, you just go to www.killernashville.com and you can find everything there. And can I, can I give a plug for yes. just just a second we do killer nashville magazine which is totally free which i don't know if you guys have had a chance to look at it or mm -hmm. not but uh would if anybody wants to subscribe to that just go to killernashville.com or type in killernashvillemagazine.com mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. you can sign up for that and you get articles and interviews and stuff for free uh, to encourage encourage you in your journey you know for especially for new writers but we got marketing for you know older and i'm not saying older in age older in <laughs> chronology uh yeah. writers as well so uh if uh, if that's something that somebody's interested in it's all free i try to give away as much as i can it really killing that i don't know if you know this or not i've never gotten paid for killer nashville oh or, wow. yep i knew that yeah, I didn't know that. I, I, I've never gotten paid. I've never taken any money. It's a labor of love. I get, you know, I, I'm, I, I, I've got my film stuff going on and my other, mm -hmm. you know, writing stuff going on and my consulting and all that stuff going on. And so that's, that's where I, fo that's my, that's my job. But Killer Nashville is basically my giving back for what, you know, what, what, we've done so wow yeah uh, oh i love that uh, and, and we've got tons of volunteers to, as as you know producing an event like thriller fest or mm. something i mean you got to yeah. have the volunteers in there yes and, that's your lifeblood right I, there I, I you're you're only as good as your volunteers so if they've made if they've made us look good doug then they have credit to me <laughs> it's uh yeah. it, it's 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 them well, I, I'll give another, another plug out there, and, and people pay attention. This is good. The week after Killer Nashville this year is Balshercon, which is in Nashville, which is like 
20 miles from Franklin, and they're basically right together. So if you're going to go to Bowser Con, come a little early and go to Killer Nashville. It's a whole different flavor, but it's a wonderful conference. And do that and then go up to Nashville and go to Bowser Con, which is party time. Uh, yeah. And so I think I think this from the from what I'm getting the whole group at Killer Nashville is just kind of moving exactly over. that's, that's uh, what we're yeah. doing <laughs> next next week and and it's yeah. uh, it's yeah. Uh, it's yeah. just a it's just a it's just a lot of fun yeah and I'm wow. looking forward to it as as well. So what's do you have a, a book coming out soon or you know you're I know you're in the middle of several projects here so. Um... Is yeah, that I'm still I'm working your agents on, asking you. <laughs> yeah, I'm working on those three things I told you about, and uh, and there, uh, I I'm I'm not no I'm not going to say anything <laughs> at all. Uh, the agent okay. will get it when the agent gets it. Exactly. But, but I, I I hope that the answer is soon. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> you have a few things on your you plate. You know, I worked I, when I was working at Universal. We, I, I got to the pleasure of working on Woody Allen's productions. Wow! And he was like the only filmmaker I ever knew who would do. Uh, and and it was kind of eye opening. Like you can get away with this, really. Um, <laughs> and so I'm just sharing this with everybody that yes, you can get away with this. And as a matter of fact, I know somebody who gets away with this uh, still. And Woody Allen would turn in. Uh, his his next film was Pro Woody Allen Project number four six three nine eight. Wow! And that's all anybody ever knew about it was Woody Allen had a project coming that was called four six nine three eight, and that one you know that one was Manhattan, and uh, and wow. and so yeah. it was uh, it uh, <laughs> it was just uh, uh, my projects that you're asking me about. I'm just telling you it's four nine six three eight. <laughs> <laughs> got it, got it. Exactly. <laughs> I'll be looking forward to that. <laughs> and I answer, and, and see, and I'm answering to American Blackguard Inc., right? Yeah. So they, right, what are they going right. to do? Fire me? Yeah. I, know right, who, right. I, I know who owns the shares. So. <laughs> yeah, right, right. You're the CEO. <laughs> I love it. Well, Clay, it has been fantastic to have you. I hope wonderful. You come back. And join us again because you are really fun and you're so knowledgeable and you've done so many interesting things. So I will probably be dragging you back on the show. And I also want to um, ask our viewers to please, you know, hit that thumbs up button. It helps with our algorithm to get these interviews out there and subscribe. And, you know, Clay, come back and play with us. This has really been fun. Yes. <laughs> Anytime enjoyed. you send the invitation, I'm there. Cool. Awesome. Thank you so, so much. And I will see you on Tennessee time in August and we got to work on Kathy to get her there I'm because I know she'll have a wonderful time. <laughs> That's great. So thanks. And until next time, Thank you. we'll see you then. Yeah.